Greetings, my name is Agnes Baldwin Brett. In 1909, the American Numismatic Society hired me as its first paid curator. So much has changed since the society first started. On March 15, 1858, a 16-year-old named Augustus B. Sage hosted a gathering at his family's home in New York City. His idea was to dedicate a society to collecting research and education about any and all matters numismatic. Young Augustus even donated our first object, this 1825 half-cent. Many early members gifted incredible objects to the newly founded society, including fascinating Civil War tokens and wonderful early American medals. However, for years we lacked adequate housing for our growing collection. Nearly 50 years after the first meeting, Archer Huntington, a philanthropist from one of America's wealthiest families, became president of the ANS and made a dynamic impact. Following his appointment, Huntington oversaw the construction of a beautiful new headquarters on Audubon Terrace in Upper Manhattan, where he employed our first formal staff. This is when I began my time at the Society. I studied classical languages, art, and archaeology at Barnard as one of the first women of my generation to attend college. I went on to complete a master's in archaeology at Columbia, where I later lectured. I even received a fellowship to study in Athens, and I published widely about Greek and Roman numismatics. While women have long played an important role in our organization, I am proud to know that we have recently elected our very first woman president. Along with Huntington, another colorful character from my time was the absolutely brilliant Edward T. Newell. Newell's diligent scholarship transformed our society in the first half of the 20th century. He amassed an enormous collection of mostly ancient coins. He and his wife, Adra, ultimately left us with over 100,000 objects, our largest donation, and one of the most significant in the whole history of the field. Look at this rare Electrum coin, a stator with a winged horse which was minted in the late 6th century BC. It is one of the many extraordinary coins that Mr. Newell donated. Along with the Newell donations, John Riley brought another important expansion to the society's holdings. Riley's passion for Asian numismatics, and Chinese coins in particular, was truly astounding. His collection of over 30,000 objects, as well as his extensive library, was given to the ANS by his daughter Frances in 1937, making our East Asian department one of the most important in the world. Riley's comprehensive archive is still being catalogued today. The American coins the Society has assembled, too, are outstanding. I am thrilled to be able to see the incredibly rare Brasher doubloon. As someone who conducted so many dye studies, I find the Society's collection of large scents, donated by George H. Clapp, immensely impressive. The library, named after Harry Bass from Texas, one of America's great collectors and businessmen, today has grown to one of the largest and most comprehensive numismatic libraries in the world. We have probably over 100,000 volumes. While new hands hold old coins, one thing has markedly changed the efforts to digitize the collection. I started the very first card file of coin images from auction catalogs at the ANS. Just imagine what I could have done with modern technology. Harry Bass first envisioned the Society's technological achievements in the early 1980s. Since then, scholars and collectors can access much of our collection, library, and archives remotely, with high-quality images being added every day. The ANS today has, and I hope I am saying this right, websites, online databases, blogs, YouTube videos, and even whole books right at a click of a button. Hundreds of thousands of visitors use ANS electronic resources. Lively gatherings keep taking place between people sitting in five different continents through these magic links. Every year, the ANS hosts graduate students from all around the world for the summer seminar. Back in the 1930s, following Edward Newell's commitment to education and research, 
Eric P. Newman endowed the most important educational program of the society. Not only did Mr. Newman generously fund the summer seminar, but he also gifted the society a range of extraordinary Islamic coins, which I've learned are now worth many millions of dollars. In recent years, ANS Chairman Kenneth Edlow and other generous donors have enriched the society with donations of thousands of Iberian, Islamic, and European coins previously owned by Archer Huntington himself, a contribution that will not soon be forgotten. Other recent acquisitions include the amazing and almost complete collection of Jewish and Sumerian coins donated by the Honorable Abraham Sofer and Marion Shore Sofer. Seeing the ANS today with our robust membership, extensive research library, and over 800,000 objects in the collection is marvelous to me. As I look back to our beginnings and look ahead to our future, I am reminded of our motto, Parva ne pereant, Latin for may the small things not perish. The ANS has been around for more than 162 years and yet continues to expand to new territory with every passing year. I am proud to be part of the history of this organization committed to such small objects rich with information. In my day, I donated hundreds of coins and contributed financially. Help us continue this amazing work by leaving a legacy. New money keeps our old money as part of a shared history.